Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to OpKey's webinar. We are going over a recent report that we have put out called the State of Oracle Fusion 2024. I'm going to give a couple minutes here at the top to allow people who are joining us live to hop in. If you're coming in on the recording, it's great to see you there, too. I would encourage everyone to check out OpKey's vast library of other resources, webinars, downloadables, and guides on our website, www.opkey.com. So a little about the thinking behind today's webinar. This is a very high level look at a very specific suite of ERP applications, which is Oracle Fusion. And we decided to kind of step back for a minute and look at how these applications have changed in the last year, what the impact has been for Oracle users, and then more specifically how testing and test automation and AI are enabling higher and higher and better and better ways to use these applications. So a little about me. My name is Isabel Hendricks. I'm content marketing manager here at OpKey. I'm joined by Jake and Vishwa, who uh, Vishwa will be joining us in a few minutes. I think he might already be here. Um, I want to give you both a second to introduce yourself. Jake, if you want to start. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Jake Mahalik, and I'm a key account manager here at OpKey. I primarily work with our um, SI partners like KPMG, PwC, Capgemini, et cetera. And I help them deliver better outcomes on their client engagements through automated testing. Awesome, thank you. Vishwa, you wanna give a brief introduction? Yeah, so hi everyone, this is Vishwa um, from the pre-sale side of the business. So I'll majorly deal with all the kind of business engagement that have technical specialties. So any, any kind of technical demonstration, any proof of concepts that we do, any kind of RFPs, so basically all the technical stuff is being taken care of by me. Awesome. I want to thank you both again for your time. We really appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules. Um, so let's break it down. What are we talking about today? Why are we talking about it? We're going to look at the explosion of the ERP, specifically the ERP cloud market over the last year. We're going to look at the explosion of artificial intelligence over the last year. And then we're going to break down essential changes that have happened in Oracle supply chain management, human capital management, and financials as well as a brief look at customer relationship management. How does this tie to testing? We're going to look at how these shifts within Oracle itself have caused testing to shift as well, whether that means becoming more complicated, becoming more necessary, becoming more frequent. Um, and, and Jake and Bishwa are both going to kind of be answering some questions from my end about what they're seeing on the client and partner side and what we're seeing from Oracle users worldwide. The goal here, whether you're acquainted with Oracle or not, is to give you a sense of what's shifting why it's shifting, and uh, how test automation can really help you stay ahead of the curve. So let's jump in. If you have any questions, please go ahead and drop them in the Q&A at the bottom, and there will also be a Q&A section at the end. Okay, so I won't bore you with the super obvious stuff, but the Oracle Suite is a wide range of products for a wide range of business needs, and we will be exploring challenges and solutions. So how has Oracle Cloud or Oracle Fusion been growing recently? So the revenue itself grew by 22% in the fourth quarter of 2024, following a long string of quarter after quarter after quarter, huge revenue jumps. Um, we're seeing Oracle as a product in and of itself spread out in many, many industries. It used to be concentrated in a few very specific industries and areas uh, at its in inception, but recently we've seen jumps to whatever you can think of, education, manufacturing, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, government. Um, a lot of people are jumping on this train as a way to really streamline their processes. We have a lot of people still on Oracle EBS, which is obviously the on-prem version, but the cloud itself, as we see here, is growing hugely. According to Statista, the worldwide revenue for the cloud ERP market was $14.7 billion in 2018, projected to reach $40.5 billion by 2025. So this is quite a growth rate year after year. And you can really feel that in the pacing of how quickly these apps are developing and how quickly people are moving to the cloud. So let's take a look at a key trend here. So we got a lot of people moving to the cloud. We got a lot of people moving from either other providers who are on-prem, their own on-prem or Oracle EBS to the cloud. According to a report by Gardner, over 85% of companies will embrace a cloud-first principle by 2025. 
By 2025, analysts also estimate that over 95% of new digital workloads will be deployed on cloud native platforms, up from 30% in 2021. So that's a huge jump in just four years. Um, and we're really seeing the impact on testing as well. So this is where I'm going to kind of call on Vishwa's observations, as he knows so much about the, the product and the technical side of things. Um, this trend is looking at AI, which obviously, unless you've been absolutely living under a rock, you've been hearing about. Now, we always talk about AI in terms of where it's going next, but let's check out where it's already gone. I would say anyone in any way connected to the software industry or other industries, like even music composing, animation, writing, has just seen a massive jump and change in how we're working um, so Vishwa, just on a very high level, how have you seen AI impact Oracle and Oracle testing? Uh, on the Oracle testing part and the uh, Oracle ERP part majorly. So Oracle is like uh, doing or uh, buying big on the Gen AI part where how easy or how uh, like lucrative they can create the OGL uh, learning material, the, le the learning guides that, that, that they provide. They're also bringing up a uh, big on the Redwood part where they have good Gen AI uh, created in there. And uh, uh, like uh, there is a lot of buzz on the Oracle part on the GI, uh, Gen AI side. Absolutely. And Gen AI, of course, referring to generative AI, which is really helping people develop test and coding faster. Jake, from the sales side, how have you seen Gen AI or these tools impact the way people are testing? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, people are very interested in using Gen AI to remove as much repetitive and tedious tasks um, from their day-to-day -day workload wherever possible. Um, so certainly a lot of initial conversations start with what kind of AI tools do we have that can make their life a bit easier. Um, it's a lot of times it's the first question off the bat is is how can we automate and leverage Gen AI in order to get rid of some of these things that I find myself doing over and over and over again every day. So a lot of interest. Absolutely. And then I thought this was an interesting graphic. Let's check it out for a minute. Um, widely known benefits of AI code assistance. On top, we have the things that are very often talked about, faster coding, time savings, cost reduction. But below the surface, if you will, we have other things that people are reporting that AI is helping with. I think an interesting one is reduced task switching, especially when it comes to Oracle. We're hearing a lot of complaints out of IT departments that their team is so burdened by testing. They have no time to do much more high value activities, especially when it comes to maintaining and developing Oracle um, for their own company. So I think we're really seeing these AI assistants free up teams who previously were so burdened just trying to keep the ship moving forward. And now they're, they're kind of able to give that to the bots and focus on more creative and more interesting things, which I thought was interesting because people also criticize AI for reducing creativity. So it's really more complex than it seems. Um, Vishwa, from your experience, let's talk specifically about coding. How has AI impacted coding and are people using it to replace coding? Yeah, so we have seen even uh, on our side as well. So a uh, lot of uh, like repetitive stuff uh, has been replaced already in the in, on our platform with the Gen AI part, where uh, using with the, with the board that we have Wilfred that we are able to uh, create uh, multiple test cases and uh, do a lot of stuff that was pretty redundant previously and been done now with a with a click of a button with a with a with a specific phrase with a just a sentence all all those specific things can be easily done. Absolutely, and we also have a lot more um, information on this on our website, so please check it out. All right, let's keep on trucking here. So this is a couple practical examples of AI, just if you're curious. If you are a current Oracle user, check it out. See if you're aware of how all these things are changing and could help you. If you're not using an Oracle at all, check it out and see if you would need any of these things. We have predictive forecasting, which really helps reduce risks, especially in high-risk businesses 
practices or anything involving supply chain. We have project proposals. Obviously, we all know ChatGPT, but we're seeing that really get built into Oracle itself to help you write better. We're seeing project management. We're seeing finance reporting, which is obviously really important because these are very high stakes areas of your business. You don't want mistakes in your finance reporting. You don't want to break the law. You don't want to slow down financial close, which some people have to do as often as monthly. So we're seeing AI kind of reduce risk on that. And just overall insights and defect management. Obviously, AI works faster and smarter than human eyes can. can. And with these systems getting more and more complicated, we're needing better and stronger ways to manage them. And this is by no means an exhaustive list. There is a lot more happening, both in Oracle itself and in Oracle testing. All right. So I don't know if you've heard about Redwood yet, but it's a very buzzy topic. Um, Redwood is at its most fundamental definition, a new design language announced in 2019. It's being rolled out with the intention to be completely rolled out over the next couple of years. Um, Vishwa, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to someone who doesn't know what Redwood is or why is it important? Why is this on people's minds? Okay. So uh, Redwood is coming back. So in uh, 24, 25B actually, uh, majorly all the HCM components of Oracle Fusion will be converted to Redwood. So Redwood is a new UI that Oracle is introducing. So till now it was classic and the responsive UI, but that will be like deprecated. Uh, you will not be able to use the classic UI uh, after 20, uh, 25B. So that's a new UI uh, Oracle is coming up with all the new features, uh, cool navigations, uh, good number of, uh, you can say, Change navigation is also coming up and uh, they're also uh, doing very big on the Gen AI part, specifically on the Redwood side. So you're coming up with uh, uh, adopting the Redwood UX. So a vast amount of data can be analyzed by the Gen AI part and then uh, automatically uh, understanding the employee's preferences, uh, performance matrices, all that can be easily done with the Gen AI along with the Redwood. Absolutely. So this is going to be a huge change. I mean, this is an overhaul and it's also allowing Oracle users to have a lot more power in how much they customize their systems, which is very attractive to a lot of businesses that might have very specific needs. So we're seeing this. We're also seeing that this is going to impact testing, however, and since these are different elements and different ways of structuring your application, testing will change as well. So we at Opkey really recommend a proactive uh, approach to Redwood, not to wait until the last possible moment, but to really dive in now to see how you need to start preparing. So supply chain and manufacturing, also known as SCM, is one of Oracle's most popular apps, one of its most developed apps and one of its biggest apps. Um, we know what it does. I won't go into that, but we want to look at how AI is changing it. Just like we saw before, um, we're seeing a lot of risk-based, predictive-based, defect management-based uses for AI, predictive inventory management. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but there have been some pretty shocking stories in the news over the last like 10, 20 years about companies that have completely bungled their inventory management. And we have seen like worldwide shortages of a certain kind of gummy bear, for example, all based on software error. So the goal of these um, AI tools, especially machine learning, is to forecast things like that, predict, and always be ready to reduce the risk of running out of something or overstocking. Uh, streamlined negotiations, smarter supplier selection, faster product descriptions. So Vishwa, I was wondering if you could touch a little on SCM specifically. If you were using SCM or you were working with a client, what would you say about how they need to work with these new changes? Yeah, so uh, on the again, uh, this is uh, like with the item description automatically getting generated or uh, on the basis of uh, like the least, uh, basically with the vast amount of data that Oracle has, uh, the Gen AI part will be automatically able to identify uh, what is the best supplier where we have the list GRNs, uh, what, the fault, what is the fault ratio of the, G, uh, the items that the supplier supplying is best. Uh, who has the nicest quality, all that can be identified with the vast amount of data that we have. So on that side, again, uh, the supply chain module of uh, Oracle will again get a very uh, big boost on that part. And again, uh, the 
customers that Oracle has will be able to get very good gains on that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think people are pretty excited about some of these changes to really reduce things they've struggled with for a long time. So we just touched on this. I won't go into all this, but yeah, again, reduce disruption, optimize inventory, improve satisfaction, just efficiency across the board. Let's turn now to human capital management, HCM, another very, very popular app. Um, so we're seeing a lot of differences here in how exactly employers are engaging with employees, enhanced communication platforms, recognition programs, personalized learning opportunities. We're seeing AI really help speed up things like hiring, personalized job matching, um, feedback collection, that's a big one in HR, is kind of gauging the morale of a company and gathering information in an organized way. So let's go forward here. So again, uh, Vishwa, what would you say to people using HCM? I know HCM is one of the first apps that's switching over to Redwood. Is there any other big changes happening right now in HCM? Uh, there are actually majorly uh, multiple changes ha happening in the HCM side, but uh, one of the most promising uh, generative AI feature or the use case that I've seen in the HCM is creation of personalized training programs. That is one of the biggest coming in because uh, the data uh, that uh, the Gen AI program can understand, it can understand the language preferences, it can understand the strengths and weaknesses, it can understand areas of improvements of an employee. So it can specifically personalize the training program for those people and then that can help uh, a big side on the HCM uh, module of uh, Oracle. Indeed, and we're seeing a lot of people switch over from other apps because of those benefits. Um, all right, finally, we're going to focus on a few changes happening in financials. Um, again, huge shifts in AI capabilities for this part of people's businesses. Automated reporting, I know I mean, if you even go back before the last 20 years, back to the paper era, reporting of this nature was sometimes entire departments, entire jobs that would take months and months and months. We're seeing the same exact processes being done in days, even weeks. I mean, sorry, weeks, even days. Um, so that's freeing up a lot of time for other people to do other things, which I think they're really enjoying. Again, there has been some controversy about privacy in terms of like plugging financial information into AI, but I think Oracle has been pretty proactive in really defining how exactly they're using this data and where they're sourcing what they're using. So if you want to find out more about that, look up um, ER, uh, ERP AI governance, and there's a big conversation going on around that. So we're seeing automated invoice processing, predictive analytics for cash flow management, intelligent expense management. Pretty straightforward. Um, Vishwa, do you have any insights on financials? Is there anything happening here that people need to be aware of? You think on the financial side, again, uh, uh, understanding and uh, explaining the variances and the trends that are coming, uh, which will be impacting the business is one of the key thing that the financials cover. Then uh, we have, uh, uh, narrative reporting, contextual con collaborations for finance and operations, that is again coming back. Uh, obviously, it will improve the productivity and the efficiency of the reports that are getting generated. Absolutely, which everybody wants that little extra degree of security when it comes to finances. All right. Um, as I mentioned before, Jake is truly an expert in these types of challenges and solutions since he knows so much about exactly how AI enabled test automation and no code test automation can change them. So I'm gonna explain a little and then we'll ask him a question here. So the challenge customization crossroads, Oracle Fusion's high level of customization allows businesses to tailor the apps to their specific needs. However, extensive customizations can create challenges in integrations and maintenance. Uh, we like to call this SaaS mess here at Aki. So it's just when your ERP environment or your tech stack becomes so fragmented and so complicated that testing it just becomes absolutely nightmarish. Um, so what is the solution? Um, I'm going to turn it over to Jake, but I, I guess here first I have like implementing a standardized customization approach, pre configurations. Let's see what Jake has to say. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the SaaS mess starts with trying to find best of breed solutions for every problem. So you end up with a system which 
is, you know, at its core, Oracle Fusion, but um, there's a lot of integrations, right? Because you've decided that you like, say, for example, Coupa better that for spend management than the tool that comes with Oracle Fusion, um, you know, which is great for, you know, certain applications. But where you start to run into problems is where you start to look at um, trying to cobble together a process from 20 or 30 different tools, right? And then you have all these integrations. And integration management becomes very challenging when faced with quarterly updates, right? Because, you know, the changes that happen in Oracle, if a field moves and that field was tied to one of your integrations, um, now you have to change the integration um, and then retest that as well. So there's definitely a balance that needs to be struck. Um, absolutely, I see the um, desire to have the best tool for every situation, but you've got it exactly right here, Isabel, when you talk about finding a balance. So, you know, you need to be practical and aware when you're looking at um, tools outside of the Oracle Fusion environment on how much maintenance you afford to do four times a year on all of the integrations that you're going to need to build. Absolutely. And we have a lot of content, especially focused around quarterly updates, which I know is a pain point for a lot of these users. Thank you. All right, let's look at one more challenge. So I think this industry moves so quickly that often we hopscotch over things, but it's important to remember that some people aren't even using no code or AI at all. They're still manually testing. Um, you actually see that a lot more than you might think. And obviously you need to test to have a responsible experience with your Oracle Fusion, but manual testing big surprise, is slow and prone to error. So we are going to just dial it back here and talk about automation for a second. Automation is obviously the automation of your testing processes. Um, Opki happens to be both AI-powered and no-code, so no coding at all is necessary. Um, faster feedback cy cycles during testing let you identify bugs quicker. Um, we're really seeing people reduce testing timelines by up to 70%, even 80%. So Jake, just to make it really high level, like what would you say to someone who's still manually testing but is nervous about the switch to automation? Right. Yeah, I mean, the great thing about automation is it allows you to test continuously as well as test more thoroughly. Um, if you're manually testing, chances are you're not doing a full regression test suite each time there's a quarterly release or a change. You're generally probably trying to identify only what you would consider critical business processes, right? And my favorite example is payroll, because if your employees don't get paid, it can cause some disruption, right? But, you know, there are a host of other processes that if disrupted um, can be harmful and expensive for your business. So by automating all of your test cases, it becomes very easy then to do a full regression test as opposed to having to pick and choose what you think is the highest risk area. So you get better coverage and it gets much easier. The other questions that I always ask when faced with um, a potential customer that says they're still doing things manually is I ask them that, how are they getting the manpower to do that? And Often the answer is we're asking some of our, our business people to provide some manual testing um, labor, right? So now you have a situation where your QA or your IT department, whoever's responsible for the testing, because they only have so much headcount and they have hundreds sometimes of tests to get through in a short amount of time, because Oracle only allows you 15 days to complete all your testing before you're getting the patch, whether you like it or not. They have to rely on their business users. And of course, these are typically fairly highly skilled and well compensated people who have a full time job already. So it creates strife. Um, one of the 
success stories that I like most about using the OpKey test automation solution is a situation where the IT department and the business users were, it was practically a civil war. Um, it was starting to bleed out well past just testing where the departments were openly resenting each other and they were fairly vocal um, about their dislike of each other. Um, so it created a real morale problem within the organization. Um, you know, instead of one team, they had a couple fragmented teams. And by doing test automation with OpKey, they were able to stop having to ask the business users um, to complete manual testing. The business users got to go back to their day jobs um, for the whole quarter, as opposed to just part of the quarter. Um, and it's really showed a, a, a large improvement in the overall culture at that organization. So I'm really proud of that win for sure, but that's not uncommon. IT departments and QA departments tend to be pretty lean and to get through just the tedious aspects of manual testing, you, you sometimes need to throw um, a bunch of labor at it, so. Absolutely, thank you. And thank you for illustrating the very real effects of when it goes wrong, so we can remember how valuable it is when it goes right. I think everyone wants to work in a good environment. Um, yeah, again, I would again encourage it people to look at our website. There's much, much, much more detailed information about this for Oracle. So a quick plug, OpKey will be at Oracle Cloud World 2024, which actually starts on Monday of next week. Um, we will be at booth number 11. We would absolutely love to see you if you're there. Even if you don't have any specific questions, come by, get a t-shirt, get a mug. Um, we're also going to have two sessions. Um, one about a successful test automation implementation with a large company called Hamanetics, and one from our CEO um, and several other executives to discuss our work with Lowe's, which was Oracle Cloud, um, which was actually a, uh, with a partnership with KPMG. So that was that will be an interesting look at how that dynamic works. Um, I wanted to wonder, Vishal, would you like to do a demo or are we going to skip that today? I think Michelle, you're on mute. Stepped out. No, we can definitely do a demo. I think uh, we can uh, show the AI capabilities that we have brought for the quarterly batch upgrades. That will make more, most of the sense. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That'd be great. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Yeah. So I'll share my screen. Uh, yes. Perfect. So uh, for the quarterly, quarterly patch upgrade, Opki uh, gives a very, very specific feature, a pointed feature actually that is real-time impact analysis and self-healing, using which we are able to identify uh, what are the test cases that are impacted because of the change and not in, even identify, we can also self-heal them on the basis of what all object properties are added onto the page so that we can do the self-heal, run those impacted test cases, and then we have a good, good time to uh, run the, all the specific test cases that we have in our regression suit. So this is how we start. So here under impact reports, we have a capability to compare two snapshots. So just for everyone, a uh, snapshot is a technical impression of all the DOM structure properties so that we can identify that what change from release, let's say 24C to 24D. And this is how we start. So we can click on adding a snapshot, clicking on compare. Selecting two snapshots, it can be, uh, let's say, a 24C versus a 24D, and then we can create. It will take around two to five minutes, and we'll create a snapshot just like this. So on the left, it will show up all the modules that you have taken, the impact for, for benefits, goals, inventory, payroll, receipt. I can navigate to any of the form, and here we have, in this receipt object, we have three forms, and among three forms, we have only two impacted. So I can go to the edit receipt and check that what is the impact. So they are expected, basically, it's a like-to-like -like comparison. The expected is your 24C and your actual user 24D. Now, if I scroll below, you'll be able to see that under receipt details tab, you have a 
button that got removed, anything that you see in red that is removed, anything that you see in green that means it is added, and anything in amber color that means it is modified. Now, because of these changes on the UI, how many of my test scripts are impacted? You can come here under impact analysis and check. So, from the thousands of scripts that we have created within Opkey, Opkey will be able to give you those specific scripts that are impacted because of the change. So, instead of running all the scripts, waiting for them to fail, fixing them, and then again running it, you can just pinpoint those. These are the scripts that are create uh, that are impacted because of the change. Create a test suit and put it for execution. But just before that, you would also like to incorporate that change into the script. So for that, you can go to the edit recipient, click on the cell heal, select that component and do the heal. This will automatically update the change back to the test script and now you're good to execute those scripts. So this way, Opkey helps you to quarterly do the patch upgrade analysis within a couple of days and then you have good time for implementing your new ERs, uh, reporting your SRs to Oracle or uh, adding up new test cases for the upcoming features that are coming up. Lovely. Thank you so much, Vishwa. All right. We're going to take a couple questions here. Uh, let's see. First question, I guess I'm going to pitch this to you, Jake. Can you speak a little about onboarding? I'm not sure how long a tool like this would take to learn. Yeah, for sure. So as part of a, an initial um, implementation, we, of course, include training. Um, we have a series of live um, via Zoom, just like this, um, training sessions that we include as part of the initial implementation, as well as we provide access to our online LMS called Aki University, which has some structured training as well. Additionally, as part of that implementation, we would include professional services to be able to implement um, and automate all the testing that you need going forward. Because of some of our advanced capabilities, um, we've looked to automate not just running the tests, but we also automate the implementation as much as possible. So we have a library as part of our accelerator package for Oracle Fusion that contains over 7,000 pre-built test scripts and the advanced capabilities we have for implementation autom automation will tell you which scripts match your specific configuration. Um, so it's not uncommon for new Oracle Fusion customers to have 65 to 70% of their testing requirements covered on day one. So really the implementation just becomes closing that gap um, which of course we would work with you to do as part of that implementation. Additionally, um, those 30% or 35% that need to be created are oftentimes not process or tests that need to be created from scratch. Typically, we can use uh, one of our pre-built test cases as a building block or a foundation, and then just create a component for any custom configurations or integrations you may have, and then just drag and drop that right into the pre-built test case. And now we have a custom test case built for you. So our typical Oracle Fusion implementation takes between four and six weeks. It's extremely fast compared, compared to leg um, test automation implementations. Absolutely. And I would encourage this person to reach out uh, to sales at opkey.com. You can learn even more specific info. Um, thank you, Jake. So we have another question here. For someone who is new to Oracle Fusion, what would you recommend? How should I start and which certification should I get? Does this question refer to test, test automation? Um, because in that case, everyone can go through the Opkey University training process. Maybe yeah. you want to clarify the question. Well, I I would say that you know if we're talking about Oracle Fusion and not test automation, um, it's really going to be where your functional area sits because there's some distinct differences between, for example, uh, human capital management and supply chain management, right? So if you're 
broadly covering all modules, then you probably want to focus more on the Oracle Fusion administration side of things um, because you won't be getting into the techno-functional details um, at that level. So it really depends on, you know, as an Oracle Fusion practitioner, where what area you're going to uh, be working in is where you want to focus your, your training for sure. So thank you. Yeah, they say mainly for SCM and financials. Yeah. So for that, um, you know, Oracle Fusion, I would say it's very important for you to be able to understand um, your organization's business processes, um, you know, what kind of finance or SCM processes that you have in place um, before you start building configurations and then after that comes building your test cases, right? So, you know, it's important to understand what the business goals are and how you achieve those goals. Really, you know, probably more important than the technical side of things um, from a configuration standpoint. Very good point. Um, let's see. We'll take one more question. Can you speak a little about your chat bot and what it does? Either of you want to take that? Uh, I think that's a Vishwa question. Vishwa, you want to tell them about Wilfred? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So Wilfred uh, does all the kind of cool stuff. So uh, one of the example will be, uh, let's say creating a project plan or let's say reviewing a project plan. So Opki has this capability of uh, QLM, quality lifecycle management. So once your project plan is already created, it's uh, running, you can ask Wilfred that, uh, what is the status of my project plan? What are the deadlines I'm meeting? Uh, how many of my tasks are uh, within the stipulated time? How many tasks are due? So all those kind of stats, Wilfred will be able to uh, uh, give it to you directly without even like, you don't have to go a deep dive into the project plan and just give it to you the details. You can also ask uh, Wilfred to create, let's say, uh, different type of uh, test suits for you. So let's say you go ahead, you have a release of your HCM module. Now you can ask Wilfred that create a pro create a test suit for me for the core financials. Oh, sorry, the core HR. And Wilfred will be able to do that for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Wilfred is a huge game changer. Um, and again, I really encourage anyone to get a demo to see it for yourself. Um, all right, that is all we have time for today. I want to do a huge thank you to Jake and Vishwa. Thank you for your time and your insights. We really appreciate you. Um, and if anyone has any more questions, please reach out to the Opki team and please join us in our future webinars. We love to engage with you. Thanks for setting us up, Isabel, and organizing. Appreciate you. Thank you, Isabel. Thanks, guys. My pleasure. All right, everyone. Take care. Okay, bye-bye.